afternoon, folks. Um, my name's Dominic Oakes, as you can see there. Uh, FMSP stands for Further Maths Support Programme. Um, just before I start, I just wanted to mention that I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that until the last 15 minutes when it dawned on me that I was going to have to follow you. Um, but uh, anyway, I'll do my best. Um, so for the Math Support Programme, in uh, the UK we have a Maths A level, uh, which is part of the 16 to 18 phase, and we also have Further Maths, and the Further Math Support Programme supports maths. They introduced some new uh, specifications for the two A-levels a couple of years ago, and I was employed to uh, lead a team writing schemes of work for the new A-levels because uh, there wasn't much support. Um, now, there, there is a, there's a problem in maths teaching, and I, I find discussing it with people from other places as well, which is that... Um, particularly with the, the concentration on exam results being very, very important, leading to head teachers being sacked and such like, um, there is a, a sort of shrinkage towards just working through a specification to ensure exam coverage, just focusing on, on, on exams. Um, and so working through specifications topic by topic in a linear fashion. And this can lead, not always obviously, but it can lead to rich connections and depth in maths uh, not being presented to students. Um, so what we, what we did when we wrote our scheme of work was we, from the start, decided to look at prior and dependent topics for each part of the syllabus. So this is just a picture from the exam board specification about differentiation. This is then the, the person who was writing the materials for this topic decided to split it into those six subsections or subtopics. And then if we look at one subtopic, so differentiation of standard functions, um, we then did a process of creating a spreadsheet where the learning objectives for that topic were identified in the middle. And then in this column were prior knowledge required, so that would tell you the topics they would need to have studied in order to study this one, and these are topics that rely on knowing the uh, subtopic in question. And you can see that at the beginning of the um, specification, there are quite a lot of uh, inputs coming from GCSE, but not that many, but there are loads of topics that are dependent, so this is at the beginning of their course, and then uh, by the end of the course, so this is the sort of end of the statistics part of the uh, specification, you've got a lot uh, coming in, a lot of prior knowledge required, but very little. In fact, uh, the only ones in this column now are feeding into other bits of the specification. Um, and so just having that spreadsheet for teachers um, does have some positives. It, it is better than nothing. Um, it does encourage teachers to, to see the uh, specification as a continuum. Um, but um, on the other side of the coin, it takes a lot of work to translate it into lesson sequences and to make connections across topics. Because, of course, it only, it only has dependencies. It doesn't have mathematical connection, other mathematical connections. Um, oh, there we are. And it's not clickable, you know, um, which is a bit rubbish these days. We, we like to be able to click on everything, don't we? Um, okay, so then we came up, well, I, I came up with this, and, and if I'm perfectly honest, I got slightly obsessed with this, um, and, I, uh, and it became the, the sort of the next love of my life after my wife and children. Um, and... Uh, so this is a section of it. This is coming in from pre-16, uh, showing some uh, topics. These boxes show what the connection is, and then it connects through into various topics at the beginning of the A-levels. Um, and then here, I th I'm hoping this will play.
So this became a slightly uh, crazy looking thing. Um, we did make it into a poster, as you can see, and that poster has gone to all schools in Wales. Um, and it's very beautiful, and I'm very proud of it, but uh, it isn't necessarily that useful uh, as a tool for teachers to, to use. Um, I think it is, uh, it's not very easy to fold either. Um, so, uh, part solution. So, positive. It, there are advantages over the spreadsheet. You, you can actually see. And actually, if I go back, uh, the, the green is sort of pure mathematics. The blue is statistics. The orange to red is mechanics. So, we can see some connections coming in from pure to mechanics. We can see a few going between the blue and the green. So, it, 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 is, it's, it has its uses. Uh, I think it's useful for students to see. Um, but whether it's that useful for planning purposes, not sure. Um, it, it, it does have some advantages over the spreadsheet. You can see routes right through. Um, so it's easier to translate into lesson sequences and so on. Allows teachers to start to see the extent of connection. And I say teachers as well as students because one of the things that's happening in the UK is we, we're getting a generation of young teachers who were taught in a very working through the syllabus sort of way. So they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily have the depth of understanding of older teachers. That, that's perhaps controversial, so I'll move on quickly. Um, but on the negative side, it still only gives prior independent. There's lots of other connections. You could add to the poster, and in fact, there are schools who've laminated their version and are adding things on. Um, it's difficult to edit. It's in uh, MindNode, which is an Apple, uh, well, a Mac um, application. I can't seem to uh, export it. It's still not clickable. Right, so another solution. Um, put the information containing the spreadsheet and visualised in the mind map into a usable form. And what do we want? We want it to be clickable. Not that I'm obsessed with clickableness, but I am. Uh, we want to be able to make and extract lesson sequences. We want to be able to access resources from it, record progress. We want it to be usable. We may, may be able to add some gamification layers and, and so on. So one possibility was graphing software, and I discussed this with Cambridge Mathematics, who are doing a project similar to this map, but, but starting from age zero upwards, as it were. Um, they're using a particular graphing software, which looks like this, and you can zoom in, um, and that is actually legible in real life as opposed to on the screen. Um, but it would lack some of the functionality that mind mapping, uh, sorry, it would give some of the functionality, could be a good solution, but one of the problems is that you'd have to do some serious, proper software development on the graphing program itself in order to make it, to give it the functionality. So, I spoke to a guy that I knew, Professor Vic Grout at Wrexham Glyndour, and he said, how about we see if there's a final year computer science student who'd like to take it on as a project? And there was, and Terry Birch decided to give it a go. And her motivation was she wanted to make something that's going to be useful to teachers, a perhaps more interesting environment, implement an idea within the serious game area, and use gaming technology in a different way that can be beneficial. Um, so far, she has identified objectives, done a literature review, investigated the Unreal game engine. The objectives are, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm speeding up because I've got my two minute warning. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, so it's to, to design and develop a mapping tool in the Unreal game engine that would mean that A-level teachers can map the curriculum, test and analyze the visualization tool, and document it and so on. Uh, the literature review shows that nobody has done this yet. Um, so the aims are 3D environment, rooms for each subtopic, which will contain resources, links and so on, doors to related areas so you can travel through it, be able to zoom out and look at the collection of rooms, spatially manipulate them, um, ability to add gaming elements, interactive VR, which is my, I, if that happens, I'm retiring. I'm just, I'm going to get, put my VR on and wander around that forever. Um, and, and possibly more. And this is, these are just pictures of Nick from the internet to, to give me an idea of what it might look like. Something like that. Maybe something like that. Um, and there we are. So, for me, this is very, very exciting. I, I think it could be fantastic um, if we can pull it off and you can go in and 
you can go into um, one of the rooms, say, uh, say that parabola problem. You could be looking at that, and you could, you could just travel off into a calculus room and have a look at a similar problem in there, and so on. Um, so, I, I have no expertise in terms of putting it into a gaming engine. That's Terry's job. Um, I, I do know maths pretty well, but if there's anything you can offer to this, or any ideas or any thoughts that come up, please do get in touch, because this is, this is a, at the beginning, and it, it'll be interesting to see if we can develop into, it into something useful. Any questions? <laughs>